listeners, I'm so glad to be in your company again. And as we look at this very important topic of hope in the end times, face to face, we need the prayers of all that God can give us here today to understand and to apply. So let us pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us and what you are willing to do for us again as we listen and get a glimpse of what there is in store for each one who accepts you. Guide us through this message now in Jesus' name. Amen. Hope in the end times face to face. What does face to face mean to you during this pandemic of COVID-19? You know, the hardest part for me is losing a loved one during COVID-19. Not being able to be with them during those last phases of life and at the time of death. As you know, when somebody passes away, you just want that reassuring touch to say and let them know, I am here, I, I, I'm close by, you are not dying alone. But not to be able to touch or to see the face of your loved one one more time is the hardest part. I experienced that very recently with the passing away of my aunt. And this has become a cardinal part of losing loved ones for so many people during this COVID-19 pandemic and the experiences of COVID-19 and its variants. COVID-19 and its variants has robbed us from that face-to-face experience. Many of us went through this harrowing experience of having to say goodbye to a loved one and not see them face to face at the time of their passing away. Oh, how much I miss that face to face contact with my loved ones. It's like missing it, you know, almost like I miss eating a slice of watermelon on a hot day at the beachfront. As a lack of face-to-face fellowship, many industries based on this principle have closed down. You think, for example, they have either closed down or scaled down or locked down, like churches, restaurants, um, tourist sites. Many have been impacted and affected by this COVID-19 virus and its variants. We have come to realize what a role the face play in everyday life. Now that we are masked and shielded at the mouth and the nose have been cut off out of the facial expression, it's only the eyes that we can see. At least now you can see my full face. But in the street, it is only my eyes that will have to communicate with you. And sometimes you may not even see my smile through my eyes because We are so covered up in our facial expressions. There are some idiomatic expressions I want you to take note of that uh, speak of the face. If we say we wish someone to see them face to face, we mean that we want to have the desire of meeting with that person. If we report that we have said something to his face, we indicate that we spoke up front and openly to that person in his or her presence. The face can reveal many inner feelings. For example, a long face betrays a sense of gloom, whilst a shining face displays a sense of happiness and contentment. And I hope that you're going to have more of a shining face than a long face as you listen to me. If someone puts on a bold face, we say that they appear confident. And a false face or a two-faced person indicates an attempt of someone to hide their feelings or to vacillate between their feelings for another person. To make face at another person may mean or indicate contempt. And so the face appears in many idioms. If we face up to our problems, we confront it and solve it. To fly in the face of a prevailing opinion suggests a course of action contrary to an accepted policy or a belief or standard. 
And if we show our face at an event, it means we are there in person. And so I hope that as you listen to and watch this message of face to face, that you will not lose face, but that you will maintain the respect and I would maintain that respect with you. And so we look and consider this important experience. You know, in Bible times, it was also very important, um, for example, in the experience concerning the Apostle Paul, the Roman official Festus uh, pointed out that the Jewish king Agrippa, that it was not the custom of Rome at the time to hand over anyone before the accused had met his accusers face to face. What a lovely principle they had in those days. But what does the Bible teach us about face to face? And I want to start off, and I'm going to assist ask the screen rather to assist me as we move on today. What does it mean? What does face to face mean? It is really as I've pointed out through this idiomatic journey and the words we use is to be in contact, to be in the presence of another person. You know, the Bible tells us that face to face started with Adam and Eve in a garden. What a beautiful garden. The artist's impression tries to portray it, but we know we are limited in our understanding. And in Genesis 3 verse 8, it says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. How great it must have been for our first parents to have this communion with God, open communion, face to face, no sin between creation and creator. This was God's plan for all of us. The perfect setting for building great relationships with the God of the universe. The sinless pair wore no artificial garments. They were clothed with the covering of light and glory such as the angels wear. But the face-to-face -face experience was broken in the Garden of Eden through disobedience. Such a sad story, isn't it? They had it all, and then they believed the lie. Oh, as we notice in the story, Genesis 3.24, So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden. They had it all. But disobedience to God's law is what will keep us also out of heaven. Even as a man and a woman may break the country's law and get away with it like we see so many times, it tells us that the breaking of God's law will have far more serious consequences. That disobedience led to the next step, and that is that there was face-to-face -face communion broken by sin. As Psalm 34 verse 16 tells us, the face of the Lord is against them that do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. There in that picture, we see the sad picture of Cain, who has just murdered his brother Abel. And that face-to-face -face communion had consequences as it was broken way there in the Garden of Eden. Face-to-face -face communion with Moses is what we consider next as we Look at this experience, and as the verse says in Exodus 33, verse 11, And the Lord spoke unto Moses face to face, as a man speaks unto his friend. Now confirmation of this understanding comes from Moses' encounter with God before Mount Sinai. On one occasion in a tent of meeting, which lay outside of the Israelite camp, God was said to speak to Moses face to face, a way a person speak to his friend. Now the commentaries tell us that it was more God's presence that was there and not God's literal face in which we read about in Exodus 33. William Durness points out that the term face is commonly used of God's face in a metaphoric way for his presence in general. So Moses experienced God's presence in that scripture that we have just read. But we continue with this topic and find that face-to-face -face experience will be restored at the second coming. 
And I want to park a little longer at this verse here today so that we can get a deeper meaning from 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians, the Christians in the Corinthians church about AD 55, near the end of Paul's three-year ministry in Ephesus. In chapter 12, the chapter before this, Paul gave evidence to the Corinthians of their lack of love. In chapter 13, he defines what real love is or charity. And in chapter 14, Paul shows us how love works. This letter speaks of the relationship between faith, hope, and love. And the writer Paul asserts the preeminence, the performance, and the permanence of love. And he went on to say, if you read 1 Corinthians 13, that without love, one gives out nothing. Without love, one is nothing. And without love, one gains nothing. Because love is permanent, whereas the other spiritual gifts of prophecy, of tongues, and knowledge will pass away. In verse 12, this verse that is on your screen right now, we see the two concepts. For now, we see through a glass darkly. Some version says dimly. And this is juxtaposed or placed beside the second experience of face to face. So let me unpack this a little longer. You know, whenever we use the word but, it negates what goes before and. But when we use the words but then, it elevates what is to follow. So we see it here in this experience here. When we look at, for now we see through a glass dimly, but what will follow now will negate that, that we will no longer see through a glass dimly. But when then is added, and from the Greek we get this, when then is added, what follows is elevated. It is higher than what was negated. So that we see through a glass darkly, when we come to face to face, that is a better experience than to see through a glass darkly. The writer adds here that when we see dimly or when we see darkly, it is not the best of experiences, but face-to-face -face will be. And so I really want to make an insertion here and say that we see the two experiences. On the one hand, in this life, we see dimly, but we will, in the life to come, see face-to-face. -face. And faith, hope, and love comes between these, come between these two experiences. You see, when we look at faith, Faith takes one to see Jesus Christ face to face in heaven, though we are still here on earth. I hope you get that meaning. Faith takes us from this dim vision to face to face. Hope sustains us with a heavenly vision when the dim vision makes it hard to believe what we're going through. In other words, when we see dimly, when we have dimmed experiences in this life, it is hope that makes us want to see face to face. And it's that hope of seeing God one day want to face that takes us through the dimmed vision experiences now. But then comes love. Love is the action that will take one from what we see dimly now to one day seeing face to face. And in that way, from vision to reality, love is therefore the greatest of them all. Because love is the only one that will take us from seeing dimly this side to one day seeing face to face. Oh, friends, we behold the image of God reflected as in a mirror. That dim vision is like in a mirror, in the works of nature and his dealings with men. But then we shall see him face to face without a dimming veil between. For now we see in a mirror dimly. How true is that not for so many of us? We see in a mirror dimly when bad things happen to good people. 
We see in a mirror dimly when those who have prayed for safe travel, travels die in a car accident. We see dimly when those who have been faithful to giving their tithe and offerings to God becomes unemployed. We see in a mirror dimly when those who had a healthy lifestyle die of COVID-19 virus. We see in a mirror dimly when you have been called to study to become a worker for God and then you are deregistered because of lack of funds. We see in a mirror dimly when life does not make sense and we wonder why me Lord. We see in a mirror dimly in this life but then face to face. I believe that we have only one part of the puzzle now, dear friend, dear viewer. We only have one part of the puzzle, for we know in part, the text tells us, we know in part, but then we shall know fully also as I am known. In all of these, we know God's face will make a difference. We also know that sadly, there will be many one day who will say at the coming of Christ, hide us from the face of the one who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb, Revelation 6, verse 16. Oh, but we also want to look at face to face with Christ. I want to read Revelation 22, verses 1 to 4, as we look at this very important point of having face to face communion with Christ. Here it says, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. His name shall be in their foreheads. Oh, friends, we will also have the opportunity to have face to face with the greatest minds who ever lived. Now, some translations um, give this next text in various ways, and I want to elaborate on that shortly. Matthew 8 11 says, And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the kingdom of heaven. They will sit down in the kingdom of heaven. Some translations use the word recline at the table. Which denotes an eschatological banquet. A banquet which will have relationships with God restored at the end time. I prefer the translation that says for sit down, that we will sit down. That is the New King James Version, and it says this, we will sit down. You know, it's a body form that is understood in my world when a student sits in front of a lecturer. We will sit down with Abraham, the father of faith. We will sit down with Isaac, the one who was ready to sacrifice his only son. We will sit down with Jacob, the man who struggled with God and won and overcame. We will sit down with Dr. Luke, who told us to look up for his, this redemption is drawing near. We will sit down with Paul, the great scholar who taught us that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. We will sit down with John the Revelator who told us that he will come and that he will come soon. Oh, we will sit down. Who else will you sit down with, dear friends? Who do you look forward to sit down one day with in heaven? This brings us to conclude with the three outcomes of face-to-face -face communion. Firstly, face-to-face -face communion fosters fellowship with animals. As we will read from Isaiah 65 verse 25, the wolf and the lamb will graze together and the lion will eat straw like the ox and the dust will be the serpent's food. They will do no evil or harm in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. My dear friends, although Adam and Eve were given dominion over the animals, they were in charge of the animal kingdom. We no longer have that. If you can look around at the animals, which animals are safe? It's only our pets. And for some, those pets are not even safe. But there will be no more killing of rhinos for their horns. 
There will be no more fear of snakes. There will be no more eating of flesh animal in the earth made new. But there's more. Face to face fosters fellowship with others. Not just with animals, but with others. And as First John 1.7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. My dear friends, we will have also fellowship with Christ. Allow me just to go back to that text, 1 John verse 7, which tells us that we will have fellowship with one another. Because I want us to think about this for a moment. There is so much distrust, hatred, and anger between people, between God's creation, His creation here on earth, between people that we no longer get on with one another. Look at our country just in this past month. From racial conflict to rape, to gender violence, to crime, to murder, to corruption. It's what we do to one another in these end times of earth's history. Real shameful events. And yet, we've been warned in the Bible that says in 2 Timothy 3 that people will be lovers of themselves more or rather than being lovers of God. We see it in the news. We hear it in the townships. We feel it on the campuses. We touch it every time we hold a lifeless body and we smell it in the blood during the uprisings and protest. These things tell us clearly that we do not enjoy fellowship with one another as we should. But no more racism. No more rejection, no more prejudice, no more discrimination, gang fights, divorce, farewells, hashtag of something which must fall in the earth made new. Because we will have face to face, which is fostered also, face to face fellowship with Christ. Revelation 22. Verses 3 and 4 tells us there will no longer be any curse. And the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it. And his bond servants will serve him. They will see his face. And his name will be on their foreheads. They will see his face. And his name will be on their foreheads. This is the ultimate for the Christian in life's journey, for it signifies an end to so many things which are problematic today. On and off relationships that just do not last. Losing our way from God through temptation and sin. Struggling with God in times of trouble, of pain, of pandemics. But a time is coming no more temptation. No more great controversy between good and evil. No more devil and his demons. No more death. No more mourning or pain. No more COVID-19 virus or cancers. Can you imagine such a life in the earth made new? Here we are, hearing and reading this in God's word. As the quote says, and as the years of eternity roll, they will bring richer and more glorious revelations of God and of Christ. As knowledge is progressive, so will love, reverence and happiness increase. The more men learn of God, the greater will be their admiration of His character. Listen to this. Sin and sinners are no more. God's entire universe is clean and the great controversy is forever ended. What Bible writers longed for, what God's people longed for, and what we should also long for is this face-to-face -face experience. Dear viewer, I want to say to you that while others have a hopeless end, we can have an endless hope. In the words of this hymn that was written by Carrie Breck, Carrie Breck, 
entitled Face to Face with Christ my Savior. I just want to share the words of this hymn with you and close with the story. Face to face with Christ my Savior. Face to face, what will it be? When with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ who died for me. Face to face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face in all his glory I shall see him by and by. Only faintly now I see him with the darkened veil between. But a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen. What rejoicing in his presence when are banished grief and pain. Death is swallowed up in victory and the dark things shall be plain. Face to face, oh blissful moment. Face to face to see and know. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loves me so. Dear friends, I want to say to you, Jesus would rather die than live without us. After seeing what sin has done to his creation, heaven had to wipe out sin. And so there will be no more death, no more sin, no more separation when we are face to face with Christ my Savior. But this can all start for you here now, in this life. It can start with us when we accept Jesus Christ. When we accept the salvation he offers like Zacchaeus did. And when we come from behind our trees like Adam and Eve did and offer or accept his salvation that he offers to us. He wants to have fellowship with you and with me. And in Revelation 21 verse 3, it tells us of that, that the idea of a meal is the highest form of fellowship in Bible times. And the Lord says he wants to come in and sit down and have a meal with us and be in our presence face to face. Oh, don't you want to get to know him? Don't you desire so that you can be with him and experience face to face with him one day? I'm not sure what you are experiencing right now or today. It may be that your life is full of misery. It may be on top of the world for you and that things are all going right. But whichever experience you may have, I want to say to you that you can know Jesus and be ready for his coming Soon this world is going to end as the signs are showing us and telling us. There's a great reset button that is happening. I'm sure you've heard about it. And the world itself is getting ready in politics, in finance, in business for a big change to come. But I want to say to you, Jesus Christ is coming soon. And you have an opportunity to be ready for that coming. This is the hope in these final days in which we are living. The story is told of a blind lady and her restored sight. A certain lady was blind. And then she met somebody who loved her. And this person loved her so much he offered to pay for her surgery. Which will restore her sight. But then she had one request and she said, when the bandages comes off my face for the first time, the first face that she wanted to see was the, one, the face of the one who loved her so much that he paid for her to have sight. And so the operation was arranged and it was a huge success. And when they removed the bandages she saw face to face the one who loved her so much that he paid from his savings the money for her operation. And she admitted the words you see on the screen. You are far, far more beautiful than I could ever have imagined. You are far more beautiful than I could ever have imagined. We too dear viewer, will have the bandages of sin removed from our eyes one day when we shall behold the King of kings and Lord of lords and see Jesus Christ who died for us face to face. Then we will also be able to exclaim, your face is far more beautiful than I could ever 
have imagined? Is it your desire to see Christ face to face? Is it your desire? Then why not tell him right now where you are? Right there in that venue where you are, where you're watching this, you can give your life to Jesus and prepare for his second coming when you will see him face to face coming on the clouds of heaven. If that is your desire, I encourage you to put your hand on your heart as I pray for you at this time. Our God and Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus Christ who has made it possible for us to see Jesus face to face. We thank you for this message. We thank you for the privilege of hearing it today. And we pray, Lord, that our hearts will not be hardened, but that we will prepare to meet you as this world is fast rolling to its end. As we can see, the clock is saying close to midnight. We can see it all around us. We see it in the news. We see it and hear it in the talk of people that your coming is very near. Oh Lord, will you give us the hope that will keep us going until we see you on the clouds of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.